Thanks for inviting me. And I will uh, talk about um, two companies that I was I work very closely with, and um, and after the talk, I'm, I'll be here for an, another hour or so. So if you have any question, we can spend a lot of time together. Uh, I'll start with this picture. Uh, this picture was taken um, 2000, 2005, 2006, around 2006. And it's middle of the Ganges, um, just before a storm starts, I saw these guys you know, taking a boat and, and, and you know, people really were not, the people who are taking the boat were not really thinking about the safety, security, and anything. They were saying, we want to go on the other side, and it's your job to take me there. And I think that's the fundamentally an issue that we often miss is that people just want solution, okay? And it's our job who are working and who are promising that we're going to come up with this solution, that solution, to come up with the best solution possible for them. So I think that this picture somewhat summarizes the, the fundamental expectation that people always have, that they want to have solution. And, and, and I thought it really captures um, very much that I wanted to start with this picture. Um, my story starts with this guy. I think he is in his mid 20s, around 20, 24, 25, and I saw him selling fish in a, in a rural uh, ferry terminal in, in Bangladesh. And, you know, I was, in, I was in grad school thinking what to do next. Um, so I started talking to him and I said, you know, what do you do? And he was offering me to sell this fish. And you know, I was living alone and just, there's no possibly I can have a fish like this. So I said, okay, so, and he, he offered me a price and I said, well, no thanks. And he came back around an hour later, dropping the price by 30%. And then, again, another hour later, dropping it by another 30%. And then I was just intrigued and I said, what's really going on here? And he said, well, you know, after, after, five o'clock, there is no price at all. I will not even sell at 10% of the price that I offered you. And fundamentally, the problem that he was having, there is no platform for buying and selling for him. It's the whatever price he get, or whatever price he gets from the middleman or from the, uh, some lucky passerby, there is no other negotiating power he has that he can sell this fish to, to, uh, to a fair price that, you know, that anybody anywhere in the world will take it for granted. So I, I started looking at the alternative. What, what can we do for this, this, this kind of situation? It's a country like Bangladesh. It has, a, uh, it has a lot of problems, but there's one area where it is pretty advanced. 90, 99% of the country is, has access to mobile phone. There are like almost um, 100 million mobile phones in the country right now. And each of these mobile phone, if you look at it in a, in a very simple way, uh, it's like a small computer. It has a keypad, it has a uh, battery, it has, you know, it has the screen. In fact, every mobile phone by default it has wireless capacity. Not every laptop has a wireless capacity. Okay. So that way, this is like a poor man's computer. So, I mean, I, I don't know where I read this thing, but I read it somewhere that in 1969 when man went to moon, whatever processing capacity the NASA computer had, the $20 Nokia phone has more processing capacity than, than um, the NASA's computer of 1969. In that definition, um, Poorly managed Bangladesh has 100 million NASA computers in people's pockets. So there must be a way to take advantage of this, this, this infrastructure. And that's what I was trying to figure out. So uh, let's do this little math. So there's 100 million phones. If 1% of those 100 million handset um, 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 owners, if 1% is a fisherman, then we have roughly 1 million fishermen with a phone. And if 1% of them end up posting their fish every day, we'll have 
10,000 big fish like that in the market. And that's more fish than all of us can eat in our entire life. So I was saying, you know, can we figure out something? Can we do something like that people will be posting and, and somebody will be able to retrieve the data using these very basic handsets? And that was the genesis of Cell Buzzer. And I had no money, nothing. I mean, I, I literally, I was, I, was, I was a cheeseburger eating entrepreneur. So I went to um, Omedia Network. And Omedia Network offered me um, some money. And it was only $75,000. And I went to Bangladesh because I realized with $75,000, I cannot even hire somebody in the US for like for half a day or something, okay? So I went to Bangladesh and hired a bunch of programmer and we worked for one year. I mean, every day wearing our t-shirts and, and in our apartments, we're just day and night, we're working. And a year later, economists wrote about us. Okay, and we were quite thrilled. I mean, a friend of mine called me from Bay Area saying, hey, you're on The Economist. I said, and we started looking at everywhere. We couldn't find anywhere. Then I saw in one corner, uh, they mentioned about cell but we, we just literally got thrilled. Like, we are living in a time where a bunch of 20-plus-year-old guys working in Bangladesh and The Economist writing about us. Uh, that's not, the, we can't imagine this kind of thing. So, you know, uh, 10, 15 years ago, is impossible. So anyway, that was, that was Cell Buzzer. And when we created the platform, people started posting all kinds of things, not just fish. Somebody posted an oil tanker. <laughs> Somebody posted a German Shepherd dog. Someone posted a chili pepper. In two and a half years, we became a 4.5 million customer-based platform. And... and um, you know, I was actually quite thrilled that I didn't take my job after business school because by the time, you know, the whole meltdown was taking place, if I would have taken the job, I would probably be unemployed. So it was more exciting and fun to do this thing. And trust me, it started with $75,000 seed funding. And even big guys like Omedia, they do invest so small. So anybody who are trying to do something like this, it's just so possible. It didn't require any regulation. It didn't require anything, um, just a bunch of young people who are motivated to work on this thing. And then when the platform was built, millions of young people participated into this thing. And people used to tell me, like, um, how will you do this thing in Bangladesh? People don't know, read English. Well, people don't. And they were saying, well, you're th thinking about chili pepper producer. They, they have no literacy. They, they, they are, are literate enough to post on a, on a platform like this. Well, the, the farmers might not be uh, literate, but farmers' children are nowadays. Okay? So there's a different kind of transformation is taking place. And people were posting. And if you look at the, if you design the technology properly, I mean, when you look at Craigslist, one problem with Craigslist it has, you dump all the data. And then you have to read everything. You have to figure out. But we lived with very serious limitations. We were working with computers. Those are like this big, uh, you know, tiny little mobile phone. So we had to enter each data one at a time. So instead of dumping the data, we cleverly designed something that you shelf the data. You first put the information you want to sell used or new. Then you enter the data, whether you're electronics or non-electronics. Then you add the data that you want to do mobile phones. Then you add the brand. Then you add the color. So in the process, the data is far more cleaner than the way it's dumped in, 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 in Craigslist. So nonetheless, after, after five years of a lot of hard work and a lot of young people's participation, I mean, the company's average age was, uh, I would say, 20, 23. Uh, this company got acquired by one of the largest mobile operators in the world. And now they're replicating it all over the world, um, in, in India, in Pakistan, and certainly operated in Bangladesh as well. So what it did fundamentally, it created a bird's eye view. I mean, I know a lot of people, they don't buy from Cell Bazaar, but they just go over, they get a sense what the market is, okay? What's the price? 
enough of cell buzzer, so let's move to something else. But what I want to talk about, the reason I find it's, it's, it's fascinating talking about this, it doesn't require anything. It doesn't require regulation. It doesn't require a lot of money. It's just the sheer willpower, and something will work. If you have that hunch, just pursue it and then keep working. And, 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 but the trick here, was not really the technology. Technology was the, you know, I always say this, the, 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 the idea represents around 1%, and the, the inspiration is 1%, the perspiration is, is 99%. It's just implementing it was the real trick, and, and, and the, really understanding what does the young people really understand, what is their, what is their com communication capacity, what are they looking for, okay? I mean, many times I thought I'm working more of a design company or a, more of a communication company than a, than a technology company. But that communication part was really the key. Now I'm talk about, going to talk about something pretty complex. It's really complex, so complex, that even after I'm working here for six and a half, year, five and a half years, I'm just going back to my note to really understand the company I run, okay? It's called, it's called Bikash. Bikash is a mobile money company. Now, mobile money, everybody talks about mobile money. If you, if you open The Economist every day, every week, there are a couple of articles on mobile money, okay? But actually, if you count how many mobile money deployments are really working, it's probably seven, eight maximum globally, okay? So, so it, it's, and it's, it's, it's quite puzzling. Like, why don't people get it that a certain thing doesn't work and certain thing is working, but when we pour millions of dollars just for the sake of creating something, but not really generating result, that's really, really frustrating. And in the mobile money space, uh, that frustration is everywhere. The people who are working as a, frust as a practitioner, that's the frustration we always feel, that there is a lot, of, a lot of talk, but very few are really going and really touching the people, really feeling, how do we really solve this person's problem? So anyway, so this is um, a typical marketplace in Bangladesh. $64 billion is transferred among people's hands every year, cash. And we are trying to address this problem with, 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 with mobile money. But before I go a little bit farther on mobile money, I'm going to give a basic mobile money 101. Um, you know, the first letter, the first communication we have done, probably writing a letter. And then came the fax, then came the um, emails, and then we got this SMS type things. At the same time, the first thing on the currencies, uh, the, on the financial side, we are using currency, cash, then the check, then the electronic transfer of money, and then things are all moving into mobile platform. But the, if you cannot if we are transferring money from one person to another person, there's a fundamental things here missing there. If we open our wallet and check the dollar bill, there's always a signature of the treasury secretary. Who gives the guarantee over here? There is no treasury secretary's signature on the mobile money. And that's why the regulator becomes a very critical piece. And that makes the whole thing very complicated. But I wouldn't get into this complicacy, what I would say, after a lot of effort in Bangladesh right now, uh, mobile money is taking off. And there's a certain reason why Bangladesh is, 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 is doing well in mobile money. I'm, I wanted to point those things out. Fundamentally, it's a very cash economy, and there are uh, 100 million mobile phones. And there's only 15% of the country's population have access to banks. So this gap can be pro eliminated by using, if you're using mobile money as an alternative. But people don't want to hear all this complicated. People just want to get the cash home. And that's what we are working on. And a typical person who is using mobile money is like a textile worker, 18 to uh, 24 years old. Even if they earn their money in a, in a, in a, in a fair um, salary and fair market price, often they don't have the right place to save the money. And if they want to feed, uh, if they want to sp spend the money on their children's school, that the, the moment they need the money, they cannot avail the money because they kept the money with the husband or the brother or, 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 or um, the father, okay? Or under the mattress. So alternatively, 
a platform like Bikash has become the collective mattress for the whole country. And, and even though it's $1, $2, the total pool of Bikash today is probably $60 million. Okay. And as the, as the system is, is evolving, in last two years, this Bikash platform has generated uh, 6 million registered customer. Almost 20 million people are using it as the value of it. Uh, we have 70,000 agents all over the country. You can see one such ag agent. We do over 20 to 24 million transactions uh, per month. And Bikash has become a new verb in Bengali language. Okay. And um, as we are evolving this, this, as we are going through this evolution of, of, of mobile financial service in Bangladesh, this is, is, a, is a fascinating example because it's one person sending money from one part to another part. In the meantime, this 70,000 agents like that guy is also earning a service fee. And the whole inclusivity is achieving in a very broader way that the whole nation gets benefited by it. It's like the way in the stock market when you buy a stock, you actually contribute in the country's growth. When you participate in the mobile money instead of carrying the cash in your pocket, you are actually putting the money into a banking system and that money probably would be used to build a hospital or to build a factory or to build a school or something, some commercial activities. That way, a very small person, like the fisherman we saw at the beginning, or a farmer, is actually taking part into a nation-building exercise. And nothing can be more exciting than that. Thank you. <laughs>